This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From your own art gallery to an online shop, make it with Squarespace. So I was thinking about my art. I always talk about how my art is simple and I started to think on a scale from one to five, how simple is my art? So in today's video, we're gonna be drawing a horse, but not just any horse. We're gonna draw a horse five different ways with increasing detail to find out on a scale from one to five horses, how detailed is my art? And no, we're not going to start with a stick horse. There has to be some style and effort. Starting off with our level one horse, I knew I was going to have the most fun with this little guy. Like I said, I didn't want to do a stick drawing of a horse. That was just way too simple and goofy. I know I could definitely make a horse with like three lines, but that's not what this video is about. I'm just thinking purely art style. You know what? I probably shouldn't hate on you if you're using a stick art style. I guess that's an art style. Is this how I get canceled saying stick figures aren't an art style? Anyways, when I started drawing this horse, I started to think about examples that I've seen in this sort of art style. Super simple. I know there are artists I definitely follow that draw like this. The first example that comes to mind is Momo Draws on, I'm gonna say it, Twitter. Their art style is so simple, so goofy, so silly and colorful and fun. An absolute gem of an example to show that you really don't need the most complex art style to make art. In fact, I was curious to see if they drew a horse and lo and behold, they just posted a picture of a horse. Crazy coincidence. Anyway, I'm sure you saw I struggled drawing a circle, gave up and drew the sections and the rest was easy peasy. This horse is so freaking simple, but it's probably one of my favorites. So it is what it is. I love this little guy and I want to draw other animals in this super simple style. Look at him. He's just a little guy. Moving on to our level two horse. You might be thinking to yourself, Casey, why did you sketch these if the sketches are basically what you ended up with? Well, I was planning this video and I didn't realize just how simple the first few were going to be. I wanted to gauge how much detail I was going to put to each horse. And it turns out the first few levels are just so simple that the sketch was pretty much how I ended up inking the entire horse. But I did want to include the entire process of me creating these horses. So it is what it is. Our second horse, we added longer limbs, joints. Our horse now has joints, which means we are now starting to look a little bit more like the actual image that I was referencing, a nose. And there was a lot of space on the body that I felt like needed to be filled in. So at this point, I'm starting to add extra details like spots on the horse's booty. I love adding spots to horses' butts. If I ever feel like an illustration is feeling just a little bit too plain, just add texture. Little lines for fur, spots, splatters of blood. It's a very simple technique to add just a little bit more detail. Speaking of things I love, I absolutely love the style of this horse. The exaggerated shapes of its limbs, that goofy face. For the longest time, this horse actually didn't have hooves and I really struggled with that. I don't know why, but the longer I looked at it without hooves, the more I realized this horse needs hooves. And that is our level two horse. Moving on to our sponsored horse. What? I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. You don't know how to make a website. I don't either, but with Squarespace, I now have not only my own art gallery, I've got my own online shop, a cheeky about me page, a PO box page. My website has it all. With their flexible website templates, it's super easy. Pick one of the award winning templates and customize your look. Do you know what Fluid Engine is? It's a next generation website design system from Squarespace. It's got drag and drop technology. And it's never been easier to unlock your unbreakable creativity. And let's not forget the online store. You can sell your products, whether you're selling physical, digital, or service products. Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling. So what are you waiting for? Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Casey Golden to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's draw some more horses. With our level three horse, it was time for me to start considering the actual anatomy of the horse a little bit more than I have been in the past. I definitely have a particular way on how I stylize certain things with horses, the head, the ears, the legs. I literally just named every part of the horse. That was kind of pointless, wasn't it? 
Sure, I consider anatomy to an extent when stylizing creatures, but I really like to exaggerate shapes and simplify them, make them super goofy. And although obviously in our level three horse, I'm still exaggerating shapes, we're definitely becoming more accurate to a horse. I don't know what it is when I stylize horses, I really like to make their noses huge and round and fun. But at this point, it was time to start making the horse's nose become smaller as it actually does. Give it that classic horse cheekbone and give it hair that actually looks like it's growing off of its body and isn't just painted on its actual body with paint. The horse is becoming a little bit more 3D than our previous horses. With each illustration, I've also bumped down the thickness of my line. So I think I started off with a 12 point line, 10 point line for our second horse. And for this horse, we have an eight point line. Obviously this just boils down to personal style preference, but I feel like the thicker the line, the more cartoony, silly and loose an illustration is. And the thinner my line, the more detail and not necessarily the more realistic the illustration becomes, but I just feel like there is definitely more potential potential for less goofy, silly looseness when your line work gets thinner. And spoiler alert, we are going to end up with no line work, so it is slowly disappearing from our horse. I've also added speckles to our horse's nose. I just felt like, again, as I create a larger horse with more detail, I need more things to fill in our empty spaces, so more spots it is. Also pay no mind to the ears, I don't know what it is, I think I used to make my ears this weird straight line in the middle curved on the outside shape but it just it doesn't look right especially on our level three horse so I went back and fixed them to look more horse like and that's our level three horse from our level three horse to our level four horse, sometimes I look at them and think, did I jump too much? But then I look at each horse and I think, yeah, there could be several in-betweens, but when do I stop adding horses in between? I could have 100 different horses on this scale. Thinking about that, that would that would be an insane video. A hundred drawings of different horses with increasing detail? That sounds horrifying. <laughs> okay, so with our level four horse, what I've basically done is I drew a semi-realistic horse with line work and colored it in a cartoony way. At this point, I really wanted to focus on the anatomy of the horse being, I was gonna say perfect, but let's be honest, my art, especially when it comes to realism, is not perfect, but here's a better word, accurate. I wanted the anatomy of this horse to be as accurate as I possibly could do, but also still have a hint of style. I didn't want this to be, I think on our scale from one to five, one is the most simple horse I could create and five is the most realistic horse, me personally, I could make. So I kept a lot of the anatomy of the horse accurate, but I wanted to stylize things like obviously the eyeballs a little bit stylized. You know what? I'm not gonna sit here and name parts of the horse that are stylized because they're obviously all stylized. <laughs> With our level three horse, I was keeping the shading simple, but still adding a little bit of shading here and there. I wasn't quite committed to completely shading all of the horse, but at this point, it was time to start shading the entire horse. But I felt like I got a little bit carried away. I started to use gradients and shading the horse a little bit more realistically when I realized I think that was a huge jump from our level three to our level four. I wanted to add shading throughout the whole horse, but creating gradients in more detailed shading, I think was something that the level four horse wasn't ready for yet. And I wanted to keep that as a jump from our level four to our level five. So I went through all this effort in creating gradients and shading this horse a little bit more realistically, only to remove all of that and go back and create a more simple shading style for this horse. I did put gradients on the legs that were behind the horse, but I think overall keeping this horse a little bit cartoony because it does have line work was the right choice. The line work is also a little bit more detailed. I added some texture here and there, and I also wanted to create a little bit more texture throughout the horse. So I used a speckled brush just to create, like I mentioned before, it's a big area that I felt like needed texture. It's not a lot, but it does help that super flat color become just a little bit more something extra. And that's our level four horse. The dreaded level five horse. Now I say dreaded because 
For me personally, realism is something I absolutely never practice. So it's just something that's just not in my wheelhouse of skills. But I felt like on a scale from one to five, one being super simple, five had to be the most complex realistic horse we could get. So I started off by just sketching a general horse shape. And this was going to be my guide for my realistic horse. I knew I wanted to approach this horse lineless because obviously real horses don't have line work. So like I mentioned, I started off by just blocking out shapes of this horse. I had a layer for its body and head, a layer for the legs, and a layer for each leg so that I could separately work on them with gradients and coloring and just really take it slowly piece by piece because I don't draw realistic things, especially digitally. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that I am more experienced with watercolor to create a more realistic illustration, but I'm definitely even less experienced in a painted realistic style digitally because it's just not something I've practiced at all. I use Procreate in an Apple Pencil to create these illustrations and they do have a watercolor brush but obviously the watercolor brush isn't actually going to work like real watercolor works. It was the brush that I defaulted to because I did like the opacity and the texture and the way that it worked but I didn't quite find a brush that I was completely satisfied with trying to create this painted look. And to be honest, this kind of made me want to look more into finding brushes and techniques and practicing a little bit more with a painted style digitally. Just because, why not? Now the question is, will I? Pr probably not. So I started off with the back legs. I was creating gradients, trying to approach coloring this horse in a painted fashion. I didn't want it to be a perfect one-to-one -one realistic horse because I was just being realistic with myself. I knew I could not create a 100% realistic painting of a horse. So I tried to approach it in a painted textured way. I Overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the results. I will be honest, it is definitely giving wiki how vibes but i was doing the best i could okay so what is there to say about style obviously anything i create is going to have my own personal style attached to it it doesn't matter which way i work so although my goal was to create a realistic looking horse knowing that i couldn't create a 100 percent realistic painting of a horse i tried to create textured painting gradients i keep looking at this horse's face the poor thing looks so sickly it looks like it's going to die I did put texture throughout the whole horse in the same way that I put texture in the previous level four horse. What I did was I took a textured spray paint brush, put the opacity a little bit low, and just covered the horse in dark and light different speckles. You probably can barely notice it, but I think it just does a little bit help to create this, I guess, fuzzy textured look just to let you know that this horse isn't a flat of color. The hair was definitely something that I knew was going to be a challenge. I didn't want to paint each individual hair because I felt like that was going to be overkill. I also feel like when you paint, you shouldn't paint every single piece of hair because it just kind of looks goofy. I tried to play around with different textures of brushes. And at the end of the day, I don't think it looks horrible, but it definitely looks like a painting of a horse. To finish off the piece, I felt like I needed to add some lines here and there because frankly, it needed it. I added some hairy textures around, added some line work that would help exaggerate some darknesses here and there, and our level five horse is complete. I'm curious to know what your personal style preference is on a scale from one to five horses. Me personally, I think I'm actually a 2.5, which is kind of funny that I didn't even draw my own personal style preference in this scale. And a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Make yourself a website and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.